Alrighty, so on Tuesday I ran through the Ratatasker boss with the new uh, Blue Scotty, and I have to say I don't really think that I'm a big fan. I usually use Glocks, and I do use Zeldris as my DPS character. Uh, I know that might be a little odd, but I think I like that more uh, than Melee, especially with Scotty, because... Uh, you know, I can kind of choose whether or not I want to cleanse Scotty's debuffs off specifically. Um, but unfortunately, Ratatasker, like units in general, like your your Valenti's removing one debuff every time you use a skill. Liz has a cleanse card. Like it's pretty hard to keep debuffs on her in general. Um, another thing is that you want to debuff the enemies and you want to debuff your your allies, but. Uh, you have to cleanse so often, or he can petrify and like remove all of your debuffs other than the petrify, and on floor one, it's not an issue to debuff the totems and the squirrel, but on the later floors, you actually can't, like, you, you have to kill the extra totems, so it's just him getting debuffed, and it just ends up kind of like, you don't get really good use out of her passive. Uh, something nice on floor one is that typically you have to use Valenti's ultimate uh, to move him off of the left stump because uh, it is ranged only. Um, Scotty's ultimate, because it's an AoE, does also apply bleed, so you can use that as another way to move him off of the left totem, which is kind of nice, but realistically, floors one and two both are really easy, so I'm probably just going to try to skip through those uh, and get to floor three where I had the most issues, because this took me three hours worth of uh, tries to get done, and obviously, I'm not the best player or anything. Some of that's probably misplays. Uh, you know, some of it's me not, in, you know, getting the best use out of the characters and stuff like that, because I typically try to find one team that works for me and then stick with it, because that's how, like, I get used to the team and everything but either way here nor there uh let's let's hop over to floor three Alrighty, so this is the winning run. Uh, I have it two times sped up because uh, obviously if you have not played this boss, Floor 3 is mainly just a lot of stalling, which I think is the most unfortunate part. Uh, floor 1, or uh, Phase 1 and Phase 2 are both literally you just stalling until everything is completely correct, and then it kind of just pushes the phase very naturally, but it just takes forever. So uh, I really think that that's the worst part about this whole fight is that you just have to stall for a really long time, then you get to phase three, and then if you don't get the good RNG or you just don't play it quite correctly, uh, you have to go through all of that stalling over and over and over again. So I definitely hate that. That's where a lot of the three hours of gameplay uh, came from, but uh, hey, it is what it is. So uh, let's talk about the Scotty a little bit. The single target card does put debuffs on herself. Uh, you can see... I don't. I assume it's just because these these pillars just have so much HP, but she doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. The um, the AOE skills can actually do okay because they're a Pierce card, um, and sometimes I feel like you know her uh, a, or her AOE and Valenti's AOE. Uh, can kind of stack up and do a little bit more damage than you're expecting to sometimes. Uh, I think it was on floor 2, maybe. Um, I had to be a little bit conscious of that because I would end up accidentally like moving him to the wrong pillar and then killing uh, the, 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 the ones that I didn't need dead um, a little bit prematurely, uh, and that was not great. But um, in floor 3, there's just a, a bunch of, like, you got to be really careful with your ultimates. Because if you use your ultimates and stuff like that, he'll move to the wrong pillars. And obviously, you could kind of, like, stall around a little bit first and then move him to the correct pillar later. But the way that I typically like to do it is I try to push him to the right pillar. Um, or the correct pillar, not the right pillar. In this case, it is technically the right pillar, but... I try to uh, move him to the correct pillar at the beginning of the phase and then try to avoid ultimates as much as possible so that way he's not moving. You also don't want to debuff him because depending on the debuffs that he has, uh, that also pushes him. You'll see, I think... Um I don't know that I did it as much in this run specifically, but there was a floor three run that I had where I got to the last phase and I was basically able to just put one singular debuff on him at a time and he would stay in the middle. Uh, I think I learned that from a Marilli video. I wasn't actually sure on what exactly pushed him to certain pillars, but I think... I'm not 100% positive if that's the correct mechanic, because obviously the game doesn't tell you, but uh, in Phase 3, I was basically using the Scotty AoEs, because I had way too many of those, um, to keep him in the middle, uh, just using one debuff per turn. 
Uh, and then if you, I think if you put two debuffs on him, it moves him to the left, and then three debuffs, it moves him back to the right, which is on the last phase. Uh, you want him on the right pillar at the very end. But um, one thing that I actually kind of found a little bit annoying is just the fact that she's a giant. She's very tall. You have to, you have to shift the camera angle in the top right using that little button uh, to get around her fat head, so that way you can actually see the uh, the health bars and stuff like that, uh, which is kind of funny sometimes. But um, her Holy Relic comes in kind of handy as long as you're attacking before she has debuffs on. She gains uh, all stats. I think she can only have three stacks, so it's pretty easy to max out. Uh, because I use Zeldris, part of his, uh, it's either his passive or his Holy Relic. Every time he loses an ultimate move gauge from moving a card, um, he gains, uh, the whole team actually gains uh, basic stats. So I use that quite a bit. I try to make sure that I'm maxing out the basic stats. That helps me survive quite a bit. I, I just think that Gloxenia is a little bit better in the sense that she doesn't require you to do any sort of like crazy buildup or or anything like that. You just immediately have the defense-related stats from the character. Whereas with Scotty, you know, you have to worry about like, am I going to accidentally cleanse off my debuffs? Am, are there enough debuffs on the enemy to increase my damage dealt? And obviously, like Glox isn't increasing your damage dealt or anything so i mean i guess that you've got that but the debuffs that you have on yourself uh you really have to be careful with those like you can't just leave those unchecked so most of the time you need to cleanse those off um and then it just kind of ends up being like a whole another thing to worry about you have to like be like oh well now i need to build up my scotty passive again by like allowing some debuffs and stuff and on phase two right here uh one of the reasons why i really like zeldris is because if you don't pull cleanse cards uh, as long as you have one card from each character in your hand, you can basically just move a card uh, from each of them for the turn, as long as you you know have the HP to survive, and it'll just cleanse all of your debuffs off from everybody, uh, and then you don't have to worry about like doing like a full cleanse or anything. Um, so that's actually really really nice. Uh, with this phase, it's basically just a lot of stalling. If you don't if you didn't weren't paying attention too much in uh, phase one, you basically just get him onto the right pillar, kill the left two pillars, and then he just loses all stats each turn. This one is kind of similar. You get him on the left pillar, uh, you kill the right two pillars, and then he just puts those little gray food poisoning debuffs on himself and then he eventually just dies because he loses hp each turn um so in this phase i'm typically just throwing away any sort of like ults any cards that i don't need i typically try to have uh one of each debuff card so a valenti poison a valenti shock and then a scotty uh aoe card for the bleed in my hand ready to go so that way i can move the characters uh as soon as i need to uh, which ends up being a little bit unfortunate. I think, like, I don't necessarily want to rely on RNG in the last phase to, like, pull those cards, because, you know, that could just be a recipe for disaster, and you, you ne may never draw them, uh, just depending on how your luck goes. But uh, I like to try to have one of each in hand if possible, but the other problem is that if you use ultimates you know, without thinking about it, he will move pillars kind of randomly. I can't tell exactly where he tries to move. From my understanding, I think in one of the more recent Marilli videos, he was saying that if you use the Liz ultimate, it moves him to the left. Um, I assume that might actually be correct because I, I mean, I have used it from time to time and it, he, he definitely tr tends to gravitate towards the pillar that you don't want him on. So like for the first First phase, you don't want him on the left pillar because he gains all stats. You don't want him on the right pillar in phase two because he gains all stats. You don't want him in the left pillar on phase three because he gains all stats. So if he ends up getting on pillar, uh, you know, the left pillar, and you leave him unchecked for a while, it's going to be really, really bad. So I try to keep him in the middle here uh, for as many turns as possible. As long as you're not debuffing him or using ultimates... He won't try to move pillars, and if you don't, if he doesn't try to move a pillar, uh, I'm pretty sure he gains the debuff faster. I'm not 100% positive on that, but you can see we now have two of the uh, the HP down uh, stats on him, which is really good. And I'm still, I'm still okay. Like I'm taking a little bit of damage here, and I'm like, okay, I, it's probably going to be time for me to move him at this point. So. I did do a couple of resets here and there. I'm not sure if this is one of those times where I did reset, but I hit the left pillar. I'm not using ultimates, and then I put all three debuffs onto Ratatasker himself, so that way I know he's going to move to the right. Since I didn't use an ultimate, it's not going to scramble or mess anything up. Um, and then I can basically try to kill off the left pillar here, because realistically, it doesn't matter too much if he moves back to the middle, but... 
uh, you don't really want him to if at all possible so let me see if I end up resetting here because these ultimates like I said are kind of a gamble he might move left he might stay in the same position sometimes I, it's it's so random I have no idea I wish they would just explain how the mechanic itself works. I get lucky here. You can see he does stay on the right. I don't know why. Like you, you would think he would move to the left there, because uh, I, you know, used ultimates. I have no idea to be honest with you. But you know, I got lucky, so it's fine. Uh, I just end up throwing all of my stuff if I can, so that way I can kill hopefully with Scotty on the middle pillar because it's really low. Uh, on the phase three, it does actually have like a 30 or 33 percent damage cap. It's the only phase where the, the stumps in uh, floor three have a damage cap. So the other floors or other phases, you can kind of just use uh, Zeldris ult or Meli ult or whoever you're using to just do big damage. But um, yeah, now that he's like stuck on the right pillar, I can just do as much damage as I need to. Uh, that is another thing that kind of ends up being a little bit of an issue. You kind of have to keep recycling your Liz passive because he puts on the gray debuffs. Uh, and then you have to try to pull Zeldris cards because he's your DPS character and you need to be able to keep... Uh, doing consistent damage to him or else he'll just regen a lot of his health back so it can be kind of like a, an RNG fest which I don't like about this phase I'm not exactly sure what they would even be able to do with the characters that come out in the future for this fight specifically but um, this one is by far the most like mechanic heavy and it just requires you know specific debuffs which are certain cards which is RNG which is really bad so um I like the idea behind the fight a lot. I think it's very, very cool, but overall, it can be extremely frustrating. So, another thing to note is that uh, Valenti actually does really good damage. I only have mine 2-6, but uh, because she's getting like a lot of attack-related and stuff, if you use her ultimate, she increases her damage dealt and everything. Uh, she's great. I just didn't really like the performance from Scotty specifically. Um, like her cards really didn't do that much damage and when they did I felt like it was in situations where it didn't really like it was maybe a bad thing I don't know like it, it, I would end up killing off a pillar that I didn't need killed yet or something so Realistically, it's just a lot of RNG. You just have to be very careful with your ultimates Luckily Zeldris I can just move the ultimate itself lose an ultimate move gauge and get rid of that out of my hand for extra card draw Which is kind of nice. Uh, so that's the big reason I prefer Zeldris over anything I just have the most consistency winning with him uh, But everybody kind of has their own choice. I see him really using Fitoria not really my thing, but Whatever works for you, honestly. Get this uh, get this boss killed and get your rewards. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I would say, uh, would I summon for Scotty for Ratatasker? Uh, probably not. I think I'm going to go back to Gloxenia next week. And, I don't, I don't know, maybe if I used her more, I could get more consistent. But, uh, we'll, we'll see if I want to do that.